and moving toward a future that involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom and the fight for its fulfillment. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. As we continue to uh, learn and remember and not forget, because when we forget our history, we are, we are, we are doomed to repeat it. Uh, and so as we prepare uh, for the word, praise be to God. As I was reflecting on Juneteenth uh, and this Father's Day, uh, it made me think about uh, Abraham Lincoln. Amen. Uh, and Abraham Lincoln, if any of you all have ever seen the movie Lincoln or heard about him, he was a deep person of faith, a deep person of faith and spent a lot of time in prayer uh, concerning what was happening in the country. And for him to uh, make that decision, uh, for him to make the decision to go about liberating uh, and charging persons to liberate slaves in those, in those states that were controlled there uh, was a major decision. And so he is recognized also today on Father's Day as another father of freedom. Amen. As another father of freedom because the reality is we couldn't have done these things alone. And we praise God for our, our civil rights leaders and many as we talk about our history with things that Richard Allen did in the 1700s and 1800s and, and Jarena Lee and all these persons who struggled. Amen. And even I think about the history of this church, Brown Chapel, that was in existence before that day. That was in existence. They were worshiping in Ypsilanti before Emancipation Day, my God. And people praying and believing that God would allow freedom to flow like a mighty river. And so we praise God that God heard the prayers of all God's children, amen, and showed up and showed out and continues to bring liberation and freedom. And so we recognize that when we fight our battles, we don't fight like others do with just flesh and blood. But we fight with the power of the Holy Spirit. We fight with righteous conviction. We fight with the word of God. We fight often on our knees, hallelujah, and in prayer, believing that our God hears our prayer. And so as we prepare to share this song that is called Surrounded, how I fight my battles. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Leah would share a scripture that goes along with that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I stand before you today on assignment uh, from the wonderful anointed leadership of the Dancers of Faith. Uh, and so uh, in our hearts were birth a, a dance, a concept to share with you all today. And we are guided by the word always. And so the scripture today that will center our spirits in preparation for the word of God is Psalms 32, verse 7. And the word of God reads, For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me. Everybody say surround you surround me with songs of victory. And so as pastor prepares to minister today and I serve you through dance, I pray that you remember that it may look like we're surrounded by death and destruction. It may look like we're surrounded by racism and inequality. It may look like we're surrounded by sickness and disease and financial crisis. But we're surrounded by our powerful and mighty and glorious miracle working God. Amen. And how we fight is through his word. How we fight is through our worship. How we fight is through our prayers. Praise God. fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles. This is how I. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm 
surrounded by you it may look like i'm surrounded but i'm surrounded by you it may look like i'm surrounded but i'm surrounded by you it may look like i'm surrounded but i'm surrounded by you this is how i fight my battles this is how i fight my battles this is how i fight my battles this is how i this is how i fight my battles this is how i fight my battles this is how i fight my battles this is how i it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, cheer. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I... The scripture tells us... But when King Jehoshaphat was found out that there were three different kings coming to destroy them and that they were greatly outnumbered, that he went before the Lord and lay prostrate before the Lord saying, Lord, what shall we do? How are we going to get out of this crying out unto the Lord? And as he cried out of the Lord, praise be to God, that when he cried out to God, that God spoke back to him. And God began to say to him, Amen, do not fear, the battle is not yours, but it's mine, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm going to fight your battles for you. And Jehoshaphat changed his whole strategy of warfare. He decided that on this day he was not going to put the chariots and the archers and the warriors up front. But on that day they chose to put the praisers up front. The worshipers up front, those with the shofar and the horns up front. And the Bible declares that they began to go into battle praising God first. Hallelujah. But the sound of the praises confused the enemy and they began to destroy each other. Isn't that a powerful praise that your praise can be so confusing to the devil he doesn't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. And will be confused and destroyed themselves. And by the time they got to the battlefield there was no battle to fight. All there was was spoils to collect. All there was was victory to be had. And so God reminded us in them all on that day that when you give God a praise in the midst of your struggle that he will fight for you and bring deliverance and freedom and justice hallelujah so we in 2022 can remember the playbook amen that when justice injustice comes and when trials come and when battles come yes we ought to march yes we have to vote yes we have to be engaged but don't forget to praise don't forget to magnify our God because he's all awesome and powerful enough to change things in the midnight hour for your good. Hallelujah. Hey, we understood that and Jesus understood that. Hallelujah. When they came to arrest him, he said, you think you're doing something. He said, but don't you know at a moment's notice I could call 10,000 angels to my side? You're not taking my life. I'm lying it, laying it down so that many other brothers and sisters can raise up with me. I'm giving my life because I need some brothers and sisters to be in the family with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There's a part of this song that says, and nothing is as strong as his blood. Come on, say that. Nothing is as strong as his blood. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that nothing is as strong as the blood of Jesus. We thank you that Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. We thank you, Heavenly Father, today that we have a reason to celebrate. We thank you, God, that in the midst of pandemics and trials and frustrations and wickedness, on every hand we can stretch our hands unto you. No other help we know, Daddy. We can be like our big brother Jesus and cry out, Abba, Father. Hey, thank you, Lord. So we cry out unto you, Abba, Father, which means Daddy in Hebrew. Come be with us, Father, today. Come be with us, Father, today. Lead us and guide us. Teach us and train us for your glory and for your majesty that you might be glorified and the devil might be horrified. This we declare and pray in Jesus' name. Come on, let the church say amen and amen. Come on, give God a praise right there because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. It is good to know, hallelujah, that the presence of the Lord ought to be wherever you are. For the scripture says that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So whether you're here in the sanctuary at home, come on, put your hand on your chest and say, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. So come Holy Spirit and do what you want to do. Make me new and empower me by your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, we praise God today again on this uh, Father's Day, this Juneteenth uh, celebration, but this Lord's Day. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Glory be to God. As we prepare just to share in this uh, preaching moment, I thank God again for all of us gathered, and I praise God for you. Come on, let us put our hands together for this music ministry and these worshipers, these dancers and praisers that help to cultivate an atmosphere of worship. We thank you. Come on, we thank you. Come on, tell them thank you. We thank you. Amen. Though you can put it in the chat. We thank you for cultivating worship right where we are. We thank you. Amen. I mean, we praise God there is a word indeed from the Lord. And as we begin to pray, uh, even last week and last Sunday, glory be to God, as we uh, celebrated a promotion day and before that celebrated communion Sunday and all these celebrations we have as Christians, don't you know, every time we get together, it's a reason to celebrate. Amen. Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, that he is in the midst of them. That means daddy is here. Hallelujah. And we ought to be glad about it. And he began to say and share on last week that the word that would come forth today is talking about when a father speaks amen when a father speaks let us turn our attention to scripture we're going to find ourselves in the new testament in first corinthians chapter 4 of verses 14 through 17 from the new living translation again first corinthians chapter 4 verses 14 through 17 in the New Living Translation. You can put it up. Thank you on the screen for us. Uh, praise God. I want to praise God and thank God for uh, my children. Amen. They, 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 they're the ones that make me a father. So praise God for my children who said happy Father's Day. Amen. For my wonderful wife who bore these wonderful children. Come on. Praise God for children. Amen. Praise God for the young people uh, who are engaged in ministry. I saw Tatum uh, doing the praise dance with the ribbon. I saw a Amen. Taylor back doing slides. Amen. And Tristan doing sound checks. Amen. She said, Daddy, I got to... I got to know what to do. Amen. And praise God for our son, Tylan and Trent, sons, Tylan and Trenton. Amen. Who I know are praying for us. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. The scripture is found uh, before you. Amen. New Living Translation declares. Now, just to give you a context, we are jumping into a conversation in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, Paul is writing to the believers in Corinth, and unfortunately, he's writing because he's found out there's some trouble in the camp. Earlier, Paul has traveled to Corinth, and he has established a church there. He brought the gospel there, preached Jesus to them in Corinth. They were not Jewish people. They were Gentile believers, non-Jews, but they had accepted the word of God with great excitement. And he spent some time with them, ministering to them and teaching them about Jesus Christ. Now, Paul now has left Corinth. We believe this is one of his uh, letters that he wrote while he was in prison. 
And as he's writing to them, he has heard there's trouble in the camp. There's some chaos. There's some drama in the church. Come on, somebody say amen. That doesn't sound new. Amen. There's drama in the church. Look, whenever you get people from different backgrounds and different experiences together, it doesn't matter what label you put on it, there is room for drama. Amen. Even in your own family, in your own house, amen, fathers and mothers who raise children, you got to tell them, cut it out. Don't touch them. Don't hit them. Say nice things to your brother or your sister. Anybody heard that growing up? Amen. Amen. There was drama even in the local family. Don't expect there not to ever be any drama in the church, but God has a way. And so Paul is writing back to the believers in Corinth because he has heard there is all type of drama. People are, are doing some strange and messed up things. And in chapter four, the conversation is, I hear you all are bickering about preachers that's chapter four I hear you all are bickering and complaining about preachers one says Apollos I follow Paul Apollos one says I follow Peter one says no I, I came under I came under Paul one one says no I'll listen to T.D. Jakes he sure can preach no one says no I'll listen to Joe Olstein. he makes it plain and clear I like the way he does it and he's done in 30 minutes one says amen I like the Holy Ghost field preacher that will run around and and do all the things and lay hands and folk fall out one says I listen to this bishop or I'm a part of this denomination or that denomination Nomination, and they're spending their energy complaining and arguing about who they are following, whose clique they're in, who they subscribe to on YouTube and Facebook. Hey, amen. And while they're doing this, Paul hears this and he writes a letter back to them saying, basically, what in the world is going on? You can read it for yourself. He says, you all are talking about, you follow this preacher and that preacher. He said, what? Well, meanwhile, the people you're talking about, you're following, are suffering. We, 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 are, are, we are misused, we're talked about, we're abused, and everywhere we go. He said, you all have a whole lot, amen, and we're struggling. You all are balling, you all are blinging, but we're going through. You, you all see yourselves as high and mighty now because you got a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of knowledge and wisdom, but we are suffering for the sake of Christ. And as he writes this, my paraphrase you heard there before verse 14, he then gets to verse 14 and he says, I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. That's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I follow Christ Jesus just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. Come on, go in verse 15 and focus in. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, we declare this message today is when a father speaks. Amen. Come on. I, I want you to talk back so you can stay awake in these few minutes, whether you're here at home. Amen. You can uh, tap somebody next to you. You can put it in the chat. You can look around and say, come on, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. When the father speaks. Amen. Now, I, I'm just going to talk a little bit about me for a moment. Uh, uh, in, in my house, there were some things that happened when the Father speaks. Glory be to God. And I have to say, praise God for my father, uh, William David Phillips. Come on, give praise, praise God for him, Reverend William David Phillips. Amen. Who, uh, who raised uh, two sons and others as well. Amen. And I praise God for both my parents who are here worshiping with us and living. Amen. But there were some differences between when mama talk and when daddy talk. Amen. Just be honest, you, you've met Reverend Cheryl, she's quite uh, sweet, amen, and also petite, praise be to God, amen. And oftentimes when uh, we were in transition from living in uh, Detroit to living in New Jersey and my father was on the road, hallelujah, uh, we had some conversations when daddy was out of town about uh, when daddy gets back, amen about when, when dad gets back, amen. There were uh, times, uh, honest, amen, that nowadays they would call it, uh, they would call it, it wasn't child abuse because uh, my mom, she didn't even know the right type of belt to use, amen. You know, if you're going to give a whooping, you need a good leather belt, hallelujah. But she uh, used one of those stretchy spandex uh, belts one day uh, to whoop us, Brother Roper, and, and she was whooping us. I was saying, oh, ow, 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 stop, 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 trying not to, amen, take it lightly, amen. 
And, and I thought I was getting over, and she understood because that wasn't her for, for taste. She said, uh, I know, but hey, just wait till dad gets back. Amen. And, and in our home, there were certain things that when the father would speak, uh, and I uh, it, it included in my own vernacular things like the power of counting down. Hallelujah. Some folks know you can be playing around and messing around. You hear one. Two, and all of a sudden, people start straightening up. Hallelujah. And I don't think my dad ever got to three. I didn't want to know what happened when you got to three. Amen. You just started moving. Amen. But here in our text today, there's something that's interesting as we all have had different experiences and all of us have not had the experience of a father in the home. Some of us may have lost our father at a young age or were not in the same home. Some of us may have had uh, stepfathers or grandfathers or other folks that came and stepped in the gap. And so as I looked at this text today, there were some questions that came to mind. And the first question was, what makes a father? Come on, what, what? What makes a father? I had to ask myself this question because when I read the text and hear Paul talking like a father, something jumps out at me is that the record that we know of is that Paul was never married and never had children. And though Paul was never married and never uh, had children or helped birth children, he speaks in the terms of fatherhood. Though he never had his own children, he had the nerve to write in here that you may have had 10,000 teachers, but you only have one spiritual father. And I begin to look at this and God began to reveal some spiritual truths and reality that being a father is not just always about who's in the home or about uh, giving a, a physical seed, if you will, but giving a father, being a father is about sowing seeds that produce life. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. That being a father is about sowing a seed that produces new life. Come on, somebody say new life. Amen. There are folks who have become fathers, amen, because they sowed seed and it produced new life. And there are those who became spiritual dads and fathers. Even though they didn't sow a physical seed, they sowed a spiritual seed that produced new life in someone. Hallelujah. Uh, even we understand this in our Christianity, it tells us we have been adopted by God. Come on, somebody say, thank God for adoption. Amen. We have been adopted by the family. Amen. That we are ones that he has called us his children. Glory be to God. That now we have been able to join the family of Jesus Christ as our big brother. And now we are a part of the family. And Paul is saying, look, I am your father because I sowed the seed of the word of God. And it was implanted in your heart and produced new life. Uh, yesterday, just yesterday, that was Saturday, we had a wonderful experience uh, in the North District. We had a church school convention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Caldwell and Reverend Dr. Avita Fuller Caldwell. Thank you for leading us through that. Uh, and our presiding elder, presiding elder Leverett Bell, uh, before we had the, the program, we had something called Morning Glory. Amen. That, that's where they get a preacher on and they preach a sermonette to get you warmed up for the day. Amen. And, and, and presiding elder said, uh, we've got a preacher here today. Uh, she's from out of state. She's not from the North District, but she is my spiritual daughter. Hallelujah. She, how is she your spiritual daughter? Uh, because when he was pastoring, amen, she gave her life to Christ under he and Reverend Anita Bell's leadership. Amen. And she got on and said, I praise God to be here today. And it was under their leadership when I was acting up. I, when I wasn't living quite right, that God got a hold of me and changed my life. And so I'm so glad for my spiritual parents. Hallelujah. They, 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 they trained me. They raised me up. They, they even made me do some stuff I didn't want to do. She said, Reverend Danita, uh, she tricked me and had me go to a women's conference. Amen. And I, I went there just to hang out with her, but I left understanding I had a call to preach. What in the world is going on? They tricked me into the ministry, but that wasn't a trick. That was nurturing and hearing God. Hallelujah. So there are some things that we see in the text today that as Paul begins to speak to them and, and correct them, there's several things that happens when a father speaks. Hallelujah. And the first thing that happens that when a father speaks, glory be God, thank you, that when a father speaks, that means there is an investment. Come on, somebody say an investment. Uh, you know, I, 
I was, I was trying to look on, you know, we try to Google stuff and get some research, and, and, uh, and I was trying to look online because I heard about, you know, that, that men uh, don't speak as much as women, you know, I've heard that before, and so I went online to try to do my research, and I got messed up because they said that that, that really has been debunked, that, that's not really very true, it's not a significant study to really prove that women speak uh, more than men do. I said, oh man. But many of you all know in your experience that you have been around some men that may be a few words at times. Amen. And truth of the matter, sometimes when men get together, they can be a whole lot of words. They can be words about the game. Amen. Words about politics. Words about whatever it may be. Words in the barbershop. Go to a barbershop. Brothers got a whole lot of words. Amen. So there are spaces where they have a whole lot of words, but then there are times where they may be a few words. And oftentimes it's in the realm of parenting. My God. And they may allow mom or other folks to do the nurturing there and oftentimes lay back in the cut till it's time to speak up. Hallelujah. And here, understand that when Paul began to give his words to them, the first thing he was doing was he was investing in them. Come on, somebody say investing. Because when you begin to give or begin to invest words in someone that matters, it makes a difference. And it certainly makes a difference in the words that you say. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's not always what you say, but how you say it. And that's why Paul, he says, look, I want you to be clear because I'm writing a letter. You can't hear my voice. I'm not writing to shame you, but I'm writing because I care about you. Yes. Hallelujah. He, you know, today, you ever, anybody ever text message somebody uh, and you push the wrong emoji or you text message somebody and they understood it the wrong way, amen, because of punctuation and they get offended in the text message and respond, what, what, what did you mean by that? Because it's lost in translation. There's some things uh, you don't get in the text that you would get with somebody's voice. Hallelujah. Or that you would get over the phone. And so Paul understood. I'm writing a letter to you because I can't be in person. But just so you understand, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm investing in you because of love. So when a father speaks, first of all, the father invests. Amen. Secondly, when a father speaks, not only does the father invest, but he also what? He also, I believe, teaches. Amen. Come on, move forward for us. He warns. Amen. He teaches and he warns them, look, the path that you're going on is riddled with problems and issues. The way you're going, uh, uh, somebody heard it this way, that a, a hard head leads to a soft behind. Amen. Anybody ever heard that before? Amen. I'm, I'm warning you, amen, that the route you're taking right now is not a good route. I, some will say, I, I've been down that way before, and I heard somebody say a misnomer on, on YouTube that, that mistakes, amen, are the best teacher. I don't know about that. I think sometimes other people's mistakes can be the best teacher. Amen. That I can go through some things and have some issues and I'm trying to keep you from going down the same route or pathway. Amen. You don't have to put your hand on the stove to know it's hot. I can tell you I got the scars to prove it. You don't need to do it, my God. And so uh, when a father speaks often, they warn you, uh, don't do that. Amen. When I was growing up, uh, I was warned, uh, brother, some of it, I was warned uh, that when the street lights start coming on, uh, it's time to get home. Amen. I, I was warned. Amen. I was warned. And, I, I, and it only took one warning not to heed. Amen. I learned my lesson after the first warning. So when I was out uh, hanging out with my friends and playing ball, and when I heard the... Y'all know what that is. The young folks don't, may not know what that is. That, that's the buzzing of the streetlights coming on. Amen. The game was over real quick. Time has got to go. Got to get home. Amen. We can have a rain delay. We can call it tide. But I got to leave here. Hallelujah. Because... Yes. <laughs> The father spoke, and he going to back up what he says. <laughs> Hallelujah. They warn, but they also teach. Glory be to God. He says to them, look, I, I, I'm doing this because there are, you might have 10,000 teachers, but you only got one father. And because I'm a father to you, and because I've been a father uh, to Timothy, though I did not bore, bear him naturally, I bore him spiritually. He's been under my wing. He, he's going to come and instruct you in the way that I'm living. You must have forgot, amen, who I was or what I'm like, amen. So I'm going to send Timothy uh, to remind you and to teach you and to show you by example the way we ought to live. Not fussing and fighting, bickering and complaining, but having a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say gratitude. Amen. And thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Uh, oftentimes we can complain about what we don't have amen what a uh, mama or daddy did not give us amen what other people got amen but you ought to be grateful if you had a roof over your head you ought to be grateful amen if you were able hallelujah to have food on your table you ought to be grateful amen hallelujah that someone took the time to care about you, you ought to be grateful that you had some family members to be dropped off amen and cared for we ought to be grateful for some of the things and though everything in our life is not roses or excellent or great some things were traumatic or trying in our lives, but we ought to be grateful that we're here. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you never go through a test, how are you going to have a testimony? Hallelujah. I heard somebody say this in a movie, and I, I, I wouldn't suggest it, brothers, but I heard somebody uh, say, uh, they, they will never understand my best if they don't see me at my worst. Hmm. What does that mean? That sometimes uh, we can be uh, quite uh, judgmental about folks, but not knowing all they have been through, not knowing all they have endured, not knowing all the trials they went through as a child or in this life. So we look at them and say, uh, you are falling short, but they can say, but I had nobody around to show me. I, I'm doing the best that I can. Amen. I, I, I'm trying and I'm just trying to get there. And, and sometimes their, their best may not be good enough for us, but if we could see the way God sees, hallelujah we might be a little bit more thankful and grateful hallelujah hearing the story of a testimony of a preacher uh, just on Friday night in Ypsilanti they have a ministry it's a healing ministry and churches get together uh, from the area people with a prayer ministry get together and Reverend Sure, Reverend William went and, and people began to praise God and lay hands and believe for miracles but there was a preacher there and he was sharing his testimony how uh, he was all messed up how he was in uh, several many many uh, youth homes and juvenile homes and he was homeless on the street and, uh, and had been through all type of drugs his mama had a restraining order against him couldn't even go to his own house and he was sleeping out in front of a mire I believe and this old or white woman came by him one day and said do you need anything and he said well I I don't have any food I'm hungry and she said get up and come home with me and then this older white woman she brought this uh, black man, black and Latino brother in her, her home. That sounds strange. And, and she began to feed him and allow him to take a shower in her home. Amen. Today we would say don't do that. That's crazy. Amen. But God will sometimes allow you to do some crazy stuff for his will to be done. And he was washed and bathed. And then the next day she took him to church. Glory be to God. And it was there in the church that he heard the gospel. There that he was born again. There that the Holy Ghost filled him. There that he became on fire for God and begin to travel the country sharing the good news hallelujah but he did not have a good relationship with his father but his father showed up to his wedding my god and his father told him at his wedding day that son i'm proud of you and though his father was never really there he said i didn't realize how powerful his words would be to me that i was longing to hear the words of my father longing to have his approval and encouragement and those words rocked him and moved him and now he's trying to find out in his own life how to be a better father how to be a better husband how to be a better man yes be on fire for god but how do i care for others when i didn't have the care as a child i need somebody to speak to me glory be to God. So Paul says, I'm sending somebody to speak to you and teach you. And I, I'm trying to teach you not just to talk the way I talk, but to live the way I live. Amen. Somebody said, I can show you better than I can tell you. Hallelujah. Uh, and times I praise God for my wonderful children, amen, and they, they're growing up, they have sometimes an independent spirit about them which will help them, but there are times where I say, watch out, step back for a moment, amen. I said, let me show you how to do it first. Where did I get that from, Sister Warren, from my father? Uh, let me show you how to do it first the right way, amen. Then you can do it, amen. How many often we say, I know what I'm doing, I got this, then we done mess something up, man. Right? When they say measure twice and cut once. Hallelujah. And so by seeing by example, by allowing someone to teach us to humble ourselves enough to be taught, glory be to God, God can move and speak to those physical and spiritual teachers. Not only when a father speaks will he invest and he, in, and he warns, hallelujah, and he teaches, hallelujah. What else happens when a father speaks, glory be to God? 
Come on, put it on the screen for us, Sister Taylor. Hallelujah. He leads. Come on, somebody say he leads. When a father speaks, uh, he leads. And Paul says, I, I, I want you to hear not just my words, but I need you to hear my example. Mm, hallelujah. Yeah. I need you to understand that it's not just my words that's going to get through to you, but the way I'm living ought to get through to you. Hallelujah. Don't we understand that children will oftentimes, they'll hear what you say, but they'll do what you do. Let me say that again. Oftentimes children, they will hear what you say, but they will emulate what you do. Hallelujah. That's why some folks, you can tell they're in the family because they walk the same way. Got the same limp. Hallelujah. You can tell they're in the family because they got similar jokes. Hallelujah. They talk similar ways. You can say, oh, you must be a part of that family because I can hear it and see it all in you. Amen. I, I know you might have heard one thing, but they're going to emulate what they do. How often when you got older, you find yourself saying some stuff that your parents said to you? Stuff that you never would have said, thought you would say, I'm not ever going to do that when I'm grown. I'm not going to be like that when I grow up. And sure enough, Get upset saying stuff like, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Amen. Some parents, somebody spoke it and you heard it. Amen. But not only that, they can speak and they can teach us glory be to God and help and lead us in understanding things like we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I praise God as I look around to see fathers, to see men in the church. Glory be to God. We know that the statistics say that churches are now 80% women and 20% men. But I praise God in the midst of that, that the men who are here showing up, every single one of them is a servant of God. Hallelujah. Every single one of them, hallelujah, is serving the Lord, whether it's praising God or behind the scene, amen, or working in the community and serving in different ways. These men have been served by God and have had somebody that has spoken into your life yes, hallelujah and I've been willing to speak into somebody else's life not always with their words but by their leadership mm, hey I heard preachers say I believe I heard Bishop Ingram he was one of our pastors growing up amen the one the first pastor I really remember amen when I first became a part of the AME church at North Stelton AME New Jersey uh the pastor there I was younger uh, so I didn't really remember him very well but I remember Reverend Ingram amen I remember Reverend Gerald McKinley Ingram now Bishop Ingram amen and uh I remember he would say things like uh, you got to lead from the front hallelujah if you're going to lead, you got to lead from the front. Hallelujah. He would, he would talk about if you're going to give, uh, be a leader in giving. Hallelujah. You're going to do things. You got to be a leader in that. If you're going to leave, you can't lead from the back. You got to do it uh, from the front. Amen. It was uh, now Bishop Ingram that I heard. Amen. The saying that has stuck with me all these years. No prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer. Much power, hallelujah. You might have heard a Reverend Hatter say that before, a retired pastor Hatter say that. Where did he get it from? We were in the same church at Oak Grove, amen. Hearing these similar things growing up and, and learning about the gospel, hallelujah. They invest, they warn, they teach, they lead. There's one that's not on that list right now is that they love, hallelujah. Come on, somebody say they love. You know, I, I, it had took me a long time. Uh, it took me a long time, Sister Sylvia, to understand how how you correcting me was was loving me. Amen. Yes. It took me a long time when I heard somebody say stuff like, "I'm not gonna point any fingers that that this gonna hurt me more than it hurts you." It took me a long time to understand that in my childhood mind. Amen. But I began to understand over time because there was a love that was there and invested, amen. And sometimes it's hard to discipline those you love, but, but discipline is an act of love. Train up a child the way they should go, that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Spare the, spare the rod and spoil the child. With your rod, you lead me. With your staff, you correct me, even in the word there. And, and with their love, Father, speak to us. I want to take us to a text that, that really is ministered to me. And it showed up today, uh, even in today's uh, scripture of the day in the Bible app. Amen. It showed up today uh, out of Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Uh, 
Starting at verse 8, let us look what this scripture says. I, I didn't put it as a point, but it's there right there in the text. Psalm 103, uh, starting at verse 8, it says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with what? Unfailing love. Isn't that good news? Amen. That as they were riding, they, they didn't, they, yeah, he's strong. Yes, he's a mighty warrior. Yes, he's a battle axe. Yes, he's a shield in the time of trouble. Yes, he's a provider, but he's also one that is filled with unfailing failing love our scripture says that God is love hallelujah you you can't know God and not know love if you are dealing with religion and you're you're afraid of God you're you're worried about him punishing you and striking you down you don't know the daddy I know because my God loves me the scripture says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed would not perish but have everlasting life a father loves come on brothers y'all come on brothers praise God on the music on the on the instruments y'all come on over amen yeah. a father loves verse 9 he will not constantly accuse us in other words he don't he won't always give you a whooping amen he's not always just uh, correcting you or, or, or pointing his finger at you or what you did wrong hallelujah nor remain angry forever Come on, that's a word that we as fathers, if we need it, need to hear that. Amen. God, help us not to be angry. God, help us not to hold on. Unfortunately, there are many men who are struggling with anger sometimes from missing their own father or other impulse. And they're dealing with anybody that's just angry. Hallelujah. Sometimes you meet young people, young men that are just angry. Sometimes daughters that are just angry. And that anger is a result sometimes of missing the love that they needed to grow up. That they needed to be encouraged. Hallelujah. He says, but he will not remain angry forever. Verse 10, he does not punish us for all our sins. How many witnesses in the house know you didn't get a whooping for everything you did wrong? How many of you all know some stuff you, you thought you got away with? Amen. But your parents were just being gracious that day. Hallelujah. I remember hearing some, uh, Daddy, I know I'm telling on this, amen, but it, it's a good tell. I, I remember having some conversations, and, and I could tell by the tone in my father's voice that a whooping was coming, my God. Uh, now, I thought I told you that, that when the lights come on, I thought I told you to make sure you listen to your mom. I thought I told you to make sure this house was cleaned up. And, and I would say, oh, Lord, here it comes. Oh, God, here it comes. Oh, let me just get ready. Oh, my goodness. But then he would say, now, next time. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for, for the next time type of blessing. The word says that he will not always punish us for all of our sins because God's grace and mercy puts a next time blessing in your life. There were some things that you did knowing we were hard-headed, knowing it was our fault and we should have had a greater issue or greater punishment. But God said, I saw you. I know you did it, but I love you. So next time, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Next time, hold on to me. Next time, turn to me. Next time, call on me first and not last next time hallelujah come on praise God for a next time blessing in your life hallelujah hallelujah thank you God that for all of our sins you did not punish us hallelujah as we deserve verse 11 for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth there's a scripture we often quote, quote that I look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. But I just want to tell you that when you read the scripture, go back and look at it. It's not a statement, it's a question. It doesn't read, uh, I look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes for, look from the Lord. It actually, it actually reads, uh, do I look unto the hills from which cometh my help? It's a question. And the answer is no, I don't. I look unto God who's above the hills because my help doesn't come from the hills. It comes from the Lord. See, the other pagan nations, they had the gods of the mountains and the gods of the valleys, the gods of the seas, amen, and the gods of the sun. But the writer of that psalm said, do I be like other folks and keep on looking to the hill to provide for me? Am I like other folk and keep on looking for the government to provide for me? Looking to GM or, 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 or Google now or, or Amazon to provide for me? Do I look just for uh, the refund or for uh, uh, retirement to provide for me? No, I look unto God 
who is my source and my supply to provide for me. I look unto him who separates me from my sin as far as the east is from the west. How far is that? The east and the west, they will never touch when it's a straight line. We're not talking about a round globe. We're talking about a line, amen, that goes all the way that way and all the way this way. They will never meet. He separates your sin from us with his forgiveness and his compassion. Never to be remembered again. Isn't that amazing? I mean, what kind of love is that, God, that the stuff I've done wrong, that when you have forgiven me, you have fully forgiven me. You, you are not remembering it. You're not bringing it up. You're not saying, see, now, back in 1987, I told you so. No. He said, no, it's been covered. I've forgiven you, and I'm not going back there. I'm going forward with you. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. he, he says, the Lord is like a father to his children. Tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Hallelujah. Amen. And I can share this as you just play softly. Hallelujah. Run to the Father. Amen. There's a song called Run to the Father. It's been bl blessing and good. Amen. And I'll share. Not only in the last point is that a father... The last point is that a father forgives. Come on, say he forgives. When the father speaks, he ought to have forgiveness in his words. Paul understood that. Gracious prayed for them. And I thank God, and he gives us sometimes natural examples of forgiveness that will stick with you. And I remember being around the age that our oldest son Tylen is now I remember one day hanging out with my father uh, as a matter of fact at that time he owned a car wash called Divine Hands Car Wash and being the sons we worked at the car wash especially summertime amen we worked hard that day washing hand washing cars all right and had those lessons no you do it this way I'm just trying to I don't want to do it at all amen but okay I'm gonna do it this way like karate kid wax on wax off type of stuff amen and we got home after a long day working and I was excited because it was about Friday and I wanted to hang out with my friends amen and I figured that I, I had worked real hard and I, I was real good that day so I had a, a chance and my father was getting ready to rest for the day I said dad can I can I go out with my friends and and here's the thing can I borrow the car amen and I'm just hoping and praying and don't you know he said yes hallelujah and I was like that song, Friday night, just got paid. <laughs> and I got the keys to the car, and, and I was so excited. I got, went down to the car. Uh, it was dark, amen. I got in the car, opened the garage, and I'm just excited about to hang out with my friends. I got the keys to the car. Got the keys, got the keys, amen. And I was so excited, I put it in reverse, and I reversed out of the, out of the garage, and oh, poof. I looked behind me and my mother's car was parked behind the garage. I had had my dad's car and backed up into my mother's car. That's two for one. You know what I'm thinking? That's two whoopings. That's, that's a whole lot. I said, Lord, I was, oh man, I messed up. Like the, like the people, woe is me. For I'm a man of unclean lips and dwell among the people of unclean lips woe is me and I remember with my head bent, bowed down low and I came upstairs and dad I, I just had an accident what what and that's not that I, I hit mom's car what you did what and I'm thinking I'm never driving again I'm it's done I'll just get a bus pass something amen get some shoes I'm gonna be walking after the punishment I'm not going to see the light of day do you know that my father had the nerve after me doing all that he looked at me for a while he said go on here huh you was getting ready to go go ahead I'll deal with it tomorrow I didn't understand that I couldn't get that I didn't even want to drive the car anymore. I was like, if you're not going to punish me, I'll punish myself. I deserve everything coming to me. But 
his grace and his mercy allowed me to leave there knowing I had messed up knowing there were still things that needed to be fixed and paid for and insurance to deal with and yet I still was able to go out and hang out with my friends what kind of dad is that full of mercy unfailing love compassion so we stand to our feet in the house today come on stand on your feet all over the house today You know, the scripture says you, you, you reap what you sow. Some of y'all heard the testimony that not long ago, right before graduation, our oldest, Tylen, was driving to, on a Wednesday, he was driving because we had daily dose and shared, and he was driving to his graduation rehearsal practice, and it was raining that day, and while it was raining, he hydroplaned on the highway, getting off the exit, hydroplane in the car that he just had a little while for with his license and slid into the car in front of them that car hit it so hard that it hit the car in front of them the airbag went off Tyler was in the car with one of his best friends good friends and I was at the church in the back office talking to sister Wanda and I got the phone call and he said dad I'm okay I'm okay but the car is totaled where are you at What's going on but yeah the car was totaled the airbags went off i had to kick the door open to get out of it i'm here in ipsy where you talk to mom yet you talk to your dad yet you talk to everybody we we're going to be there amen and certainly amen him feeling shook up mom showed up there first and be able to say she took him going ahead to your rehearsal we, we will take care of this and I remember sitting and driving in the car with him. I know probably feeling bad. And I, I told him the story. I said, you ever hear the story about when I messed up two cars? He said, no, never heard that story. I said, it sure did happen. I'm, Papa's car, I hit Papa and Grammy's car. <laughs> One's fell swoop, about, about your age. The good news is I was okay, amen. And he was gracious. Because he's gracious, we can be gracious going to be all right and today wherever you are here in the sanctuary or there in the sanctuary of your homes your living rooms your your car if you're on a walk wherever you are I want you to know that our father our heavenly father forgives when we have made a wreck in our lives when we've made some decisions that have caused a mess around us he reaches down with his love and he says i see you i know what you're going through i know what you have done but i've made a way to get out of it i know it's going to be costly because a lot of times our mistakes cost something and i know you don't have enough in your bank account to pay for the cost of this thing but guess what i've got something that will take care of the cost it's not just something but it's someone and his name is jesus and so instead of you getting up on the witness stand and saying I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help me God and you testifying what you did wrong and how you messed up guess what he's going to stand in your place and not just stand in your place but he will take the punishment that you deserve a lot of religions out there a lot of beliefs a lot of faiths out there but no other religion talks about a, a suffering savior that takes the sins of the whole world on his shoulders and and fulfills the righteous requirement because the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is everlasting life wait a minute how, how does he get to die and i get to live his unfailing grace and mercy and love that's how that's how that's how so wherever we are with eyes closed and with heads bowed today come on let's have a moment with the lord if you're in your room in your home just close your eyes don't worry about anybody else around you hallelujah and i'm going to ask you a question and you can answer honestly hallelujah it's like one of those anonymous anonymous polls amen have you given your life to this father 
I'm not talking about have you gone to church. I'm not talking about that you're on somebody's role. I'm not talking about uh, have you ever prayed before. No, have you given your life? Have you given him the keys to your life? Have you put yourself under God, the Father's authority to speak to you and to warn you and to teach you and to train you and to follow the example he set through Jesus? If the answer for either of those questions in your heart you know is no, the good news is today it can be yes. Today the invitation is available to say yes, Lord. And I can assume that everybody in the house here is saved, but I never want to do that. So if you're here today and you want to make a commitment to Christ to give him the keys of your life, just raise your hand. I'll see your hand, but he already sees your heart. If you're at home right now and you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, I need that type of father. Amen. You can respond to the, to the link in the chat or you can text the number on the screen. Connect. Amen. And just know in doing so, that step of faith. Amen. Uh, you will be walking into a relationship with God and we will partner with you and pray with you and help you learn and grow together. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout together, together, together. We are better together glory be to God because today on this family day this this Father's Day we've got brothers and sisters all over the world who are worshiping and praising our Father together hallelujah we're preparing for a great family reunion where we'll meet each other we've never seen them we say uh, you look just like your father you wow you've grown up a whole lot yeah you look older now but I can see the family resemblance if the resemblance of God need a church home you need a crew to roll with to grow with to have your back we say welcome we say welcome today just respond to the connect link amen or text the number on your screen connect amen we'll reach out to you and help you walk this journey because we believe amen that God is bringing sons and daughters back to his house back to his family we believe that God is drawing people he said Jesus said if I be lifted up I would draw all men women boys and girls unto me hallelujah I want to share testify amen we have a, a